Morning brief for the U.S. grain markets, June 29th at 7.33 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Rich Positive for Critical Point. Okay, looking at the daily chart, uh, July corn futures still. Uh, I'm finding a little bit difficult to switch to September. So too much fuzziness in it. Uh, <clears throat> and, and I still prefer the December over September, but I don't know if that makes sense to just roll that uh, far and on our continuous charts it wouldn't roll out, out that far anyways it would only go with the September okay so what we've got is yesterday we said the, the level four trend interweek swing ought to be up uh, we however we identified some possibilities it could be the other way we gave you some downside price objectives if it went the other way we told you it would move up to prior resistance of last week near last week's high well, we were right, but of course, price moved well beyond it. That doesn't make us wrong, it makes us more right, okay? Now, we said the market would top out late yesterday into the start of overnight. You may recall that, and I went and checked like a 20-minute chart, and it topped out in like the first 20-minute bar last night. That would be the absolute latest allowed. Ideally, it would have topped during the day session, but it was too strong of a day. They couldn't help themselves. Those that were fearful put it up, in the first few minutes, others though who were looking over the overall structure sold and they sold overnight. Now, they didn't sell that much, there's not much price change, so you could argue the overnight action's meaningless. The model's assuming the market's now going down into a level four bottom, ideally due tomorrow, but I've, as I dug deeper into the intraday portion of the modeling, I can see a possibility it only goes down until late today, maybe bottoms early overnight, something like that. Okay, um, and the model really isn't ch uh, changing for volatility here at all. It's using the same bars. I shouldn't say the model. This is like a, a different kind of model that's taking the model and trying to convert it to actual daily bars to give you this five-day price flow or forecast, okay? Um, so it may come down and test the five-day average that is rising, uh, suggesting the level three trend is up. Well, the model's saying the market's kind of confused right now, but it's more aggressive. It's not confusion that leads to stagnation. It's confusion to be more aggressive. And the reason is we have conflicts of where we just got rain in some of the driest areas, even in Iowa, uh, which something, what is it, 40% of Iowa extreme drought. We now, uh, Someone said, now this is old news, something like six counties in Illinois, uh, maybe drought to extreme drought, which really I'm not picking that up on drought monitor maps as of last week. Um, but at any rate, there's confusion, hey, it's raining, but it's getting hot. And then I think there's excitement of temperatures of what, 110 to 117 degrees up in the Northwest going on up into Canada. It's crazy, that's insane. Meanwhile, on the East Coast of US or Northeast, places like even New York State, extreme heat, they had power outages because it was so humid. In other words, it's not necessarily heat that caused problems for electric companies, it's humidity and heat. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we've got all this conflict that it can be hot and dry, but it can also be hot and humid or wet, and then it can also be just out wet that we're getting storms. And so what is the story here, you know? Um, and now, at least for the Midwest of Corn Belt, it looks like they're forecasting maybe by next week to actually see hot temps again. So all that stuff's probably more important than tomorrow's report, but of course everybody's thinking, hey, uh, that is an important report. And some of the forecasts I'm seeing, even from uh, foreign uh, companies in Australia and over in the Asian countries, some European are kind of in line with American uh, companies forecasting the acreage would be up. So if acreage is not up, that could be quite a bit of disappointment, even though it might not uh, be down much at all, okay? That I think there is that net bias globally in the U.S. to assume more acres are coming. And if they get even more acres, that, of course, should should make things a little bit more bearish. So I'm always assuming down, up, down, and a level three bottom won't show up to, let's see, this would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, won't show up to the end of the week, it could even delay into the start of next week. So they could turn bearish on us here or range trade for the rest of this week and the next week, depending on the report tomorrow, okay? And of course, weather. Now, the model is also showing that really tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, but the next day could be the earliest for a level three uh, bottom. So I moved my level three marker 
the very edge of it to tell me, you know what, even though this forecast is showing it to be already up, but then down for the level three, that in the, if the market wanted to sell off tomorrow into the following day, that could be the level three bottom. One earlier, one day earlier than what is showing here in terms of prices on this chart. However, the model still, when it looks farther out, is saying yes, but there ought to be more upside than this. It's as if the market has started up for the next level three uptrend into next week, but it's forgot to put in the level three bottom. So something's going to occur during the remainder of this week where it's going to say, oops, I got to go back down one last time. Then I can go up. And the key is, is that going to come from a bearish report where they slam dunk this market tomorrow? Or is it going to be more of just some consolidation, modest pullback here, maybe some weather interferes, and then eventually resolves where indeed they take it higher. Although the model is also showing that a level two top could occur, okay, as of July 3rd, it's got some minor rule violations on weekly data and monthly data. I want to hold out into next week. Uh, to really see that and and so in other words, I want to get this market up and beyond July 4th But let's keep in mind that rule of thumb that if everything's looking good by July 4th You bet on the downside. So this July top Doesn't necessarily have to occur right ahead July in other words, they're gonna come back in on July 5th and sell it They're actually going to uh, they, they may yet put it up and maybe some of that hot weather coming further out will help give it some buoyancy to go into next week. But I am still concerned that we get the level two top and this market's got to drop into uh, sometime July on into August for a level two uh, bottom. Okay, So I think there's going to be some selling. I'm also coming up with some ideas that July really could be a choppy month. We could see um, Level two top into a level two bottom, then the market changes his mind, goes up late July into a later than currently forecast top, but the latest allowed, then actually goes down into August for a later and allowed level two, or it just continues lower into, say, September, October for a more important bottom. Okay? And so we can see that the 12 major groups that run this market, control this market, they are looking at multiple scenarios and they got at least two scenarios when the market can put in an important top early July, go down into August, blip up a little maybe in August, and on down to October. Basically, it's going to go down from early July into October. The other scenario is saying it's probably going higher into late July or weather's going to make the market change its mind and go higher into late July, then it's going down into October. That kind of scenario. All right, uh, so what else do I have here? Can I show you something on a weekly chart here for corn? This is a continuous chart still operating off the uh, July. And what it's suggesting is chance to be higher in the next week and then lower uh, into late July, probably a little bounce in August, and then lower still, probably going down to $5 to 440 uh, by the time we get into harvest, okay? Now, again, there's alternate scenarios, however, that could suggest, man, this market's going higher in August, September because, boy, it did turn off hot and dry. Man, we got slam dunked on the yield. I'm still not seeing it, but it makes me nervous how, how, much, how dry Iowa is right now. And then you hear stories it's starting to creep maybe further east, okay? So, again, it all boils down to weather, but the current best forecast is this market's going lower into late July, perhaps early August, might pick its head up a little bit, and it's going lower into October. Now, uh, what can I tell you for just near term? Um, basically, I don't have too much to show you for upside objectives here. When it took out that high, it did say, well, this thing can rally to about 687. It can rally to a little over seven bucks. But the problem is it didn't properly put in a level three bottom, so it can still set back. So maybe it's on its way to seven bucks, but in the next few days it ought to pull back some. Uh, to give us downside objectives, you really have to race this week's rally. And I don't really want to wait that long, but I don't have any signal telling me to be an aggressive seller. I basically want to be bullish into July now, 
but I'm warning you, this market can still dip, and there is still a chance for a bearish report tomorrow. Right at the moment, the market's thinking it's not going to be bearish enough. It might even be bullish. And I think I think what that is, I think that links to they're willing to uh, revisit a bullish weather scenario as being more important. All right, let's move on to the other markets. And I don't know how accurate this is going to be. This is the soybean market daily chart, July futures. Not enough selling, and on cyclical basis, not enough buying and selling to really put a level three bottom. It's it's almost once again, it's like forgetting to put a level three bottom. It's getting too bold up. At least they're retracing this, and I think they're going to retrace it in tomorrow. I don't think this uh, five-day forecast is right. I think it's going to do something like this. I think the model is just a little bit of a head of itself. But I do think that if it could at least go into a bottom tomorrow, maybe I can show an early level three bottom. It really is like corn should be out here, meaning there could still be considerable downside that they don't like the acreage report or the weather backs off again on future uh, hot temps. Uh, ideally, though, it should still bounce into next week for a level three top okay and that may be our level two and if it does not bounce much at all unless it turns hot and dry in july to actually uh, create the level three top that's due late july create it to be higher still so that it then extends or delays the level two top into late july unless it does that it's just an outright bearish scenario i think into late july on into august and something similar to corn it is hovering around the five day average at least for soybeans, somewhat oversold here, narrowing spread, we could get a buy signal. I think if you see soybeans trade above today's high at 1370 during the day session here, I'd be a little concerned that we really can't time that level four trend right. Ideally, the level four trend should be down today and maybe even into early tomorrow, okay, for corn and somewhat for beans, but... Uh, if by chance the market is strong today, it could forecast exact opposite, but that probability would be low, confidence would be low, meaning I don't want to really trade the upside as a day trader if it goes higher today. I'd rather trade the downside and then going in near the close today, if I think it's intraday oversold, I wouldn't want to trade the downside anymore. I could see it bouncing tomorrow, which is interesting because it's a report day, okay? And tomorrow I'll give you another update. It may only be a phone update early. I have my schedule is all over the place tomorrow, so I don't know whether I'll be around the time of the report or not. Things may delay, may be delayed to quite late uh, tomorrow. I've got a crazy day coming. All right, uh, I really don't have much for upside objectives here for soybeans. Fourteen dollars or around fourteen oh five is my chart resistance. You could argue the high at 13.85 or so is resistance. It's trying to make up its mind whether the five-day average is resistance. I would really like to see these markets move higher in the next week. Uh, you know that by now. I've been saying that for some time. But I'm really concerned all we're looking at is knee-jerk reactions before it goes lower into August. And yet this heat, uh, especially in the Northwest, especially over in the East, uh, forecast for maybe the Corn Belt to get some heat next week. It's making me nervous have we turned off the spring rains finally and we're going to get into true summer weather where summer is normally warm and dry okay or drier or not as wet things like that and will it get flat out hot and it just it just concerns me that things could explode here on us more on the bullish scenario yet right at the moment i'm still not ready to tip that pendulum and saying hey let's just be gung-ho bulls for july here i'm not seeing it now uh prop normally by the 6th of July, we would see uh, NOAA's monthly official data on temperature and precipitation for the prior month, for June. But with the holiday, we may not get it to the 8th or something like that. I, I don't know what their schedule is. I haven't tried to look anything up. Now, what I'll do when I get that monthly official data is I'll look it up for the Corn Belt states, which I use seven of them, and I will combine that uh, for an average temperature, and then I'm going to plug it into the critical point temperature model, and we'll see. If it seems hotter than normal, then we're vulnerable that yield could get trimmed in July and August uh, with normal to also hotter than normal temps. If we were close to normal, 
and I doubt we're going to be below normal, uh, then it would kind of send a message that, boy, you got to get it even hotter in July. And I'm just not convinced we're going to do it. But I must say it is startling to see some of that northwest temperatures out there. I, I just can't fathom uh, 117 degrees and I don't, I don't know where it was Oregon Washington and they were saying uh, maybe it's 110 116 in parts of Canada come on crazy stuff but for the moment it still looks like it's a western US problem and I wonder if that means there's just not going to be the issues this year um, we'll have to wait to next year and later for our crop problem our cyclical crop problem so I don't have much else to say there. Uh, let's move on to the wheat market here. Uh, rolling five-day forecast, it's trading right in with the first day, so I have not updated this. Uh, should dip a little into tomorrow, first chance for a level three bottom, but frankly, I prefer it later. I'm a little suspicious. Even if they want to bounce it tomorrow, it's coming back. And then it'll be higher next week for all these markets. And I just wonder if they won't really care for the report. I'll try to, obviously I'm going to keep working on this all the way into tomorrow and I'll, I'll update you along the way, but it's like this level three is just not synchronized with what's going on with weather, what's going on with the general way of, of doing business, moving corn and beans and wheat through the pipeline. And it's understandable why they could be off. It's kind of like some have just turned extremely bullish and some have turned even more bearish. And the bulls won recently, but the bears may yet win again in the next few days. So I really think this market needs to just kind of coast into the report and then we'll see what we get. It can go either way for a few days after the report. But as I look out to next week, I think another bounce is coming. And I just would love to see some strength here into early July for that level two top. Five day average is nearby resistance. Uh, it's showing this market can bounce up to recent resistance around 673 for the July Chicago SRW market. And this market's oversold on the daily stochastic, rolling towards a buy signal. I think this somehow, this is going to work for a bounce into early July. What I don't know, is it going to be higher a few days after the report or lower? And then, of course, which way is it flipping the day of the report? At least for today, I think they're going to sell a little bit of grain here uh, and back this off a little bit uh, as they try to wait on the report. But if you see a new high for today in any of these markets, I'm unwilling to buy it from a day trading point of view because it's really not doing what it should do. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it. It may be a sign of strength and it's just going higher into tomorrow. Okay, so all I would say is you need to be even quick and nimble and faster, I think, if trading to the upside. Otherwise, I'd probe the downside a little bit today. But again, I'm not so sure there's a lot of downside here because we do have some, some conflict in this weather where it's actually hot and wet. <laughs> That's how I view it, even though we know there's a lot of ground out there that it's dry and I'm sure there's being a bit of an impact. Uh, the outside markets don't matter. I don't think the foreign global markets matter. They're pretty much watching the U.S. And I don't think the dollar matters. I don't think the energy markets matter. It's all about tomorrow's report and what's going on with this weather. And I think the weather's getting a little bit crazier here where it's like it's getting even hotter, yet there's been rains and there could still be some rains. All right, past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. Have a great day. Thank you.